Hello guys, this is Real World Audio and uh, today I'm just posting a very short post and uh, in response to Edward's uh, comment he commented a wonderful comment quoted uh, Susumu Sakuma uh, the Japanese uh, builder I just call him builder uh, he, he had his own um, I would say school or train of thought or own um, way of building audio systems so people remember him mostly as building amplifiers but he did much more than that uh, so I really urge everyone to look into Susumu Sakuma how? Uh, my my uh, suggestion is let me google it type it let me google it and then it will google up for you what? Susumu Sakuma amplifier May just or just add Sakuma and add amplifier and then you will find links and then just go through and explore them so coming back to uh, the Sakuma quote uh, this <laughs> I, I remember when I read this quote and and now I'm glad Edward posted it because uh, now you all can benefit from it and, and Sakuma wrote that I open the reference books every day and then that old interstage transformer asked me, Sakuma, who do you build this amplifier for? Do you make the amplifier to get praise from electronics teachers? Since that day, I have made amplifiers for my own pleasure as an amateur. And uh, so if you get to know uh, Susumu Sakuma's uh, legacy, then, then he really liked to talk in a, in a poetic language like this. Uh, but as you know, poets write their poems to give you an important message. And, and, and Sakuma's message was to uh, use reference books as an orientation point, but... Uh, do not uh, become a hardcore follower of them. So do not let the reference book to be your, uh, your compass. Or well, it can be your guiding star, but the application has to be based on your experiences, has to match your experiences. Why and how? I will give you uh, two uh, uh, con two, um, I would say, two different scenarios that you can look at and where the reference books and the measurements can act as a compass for you, but it is obvious that they should not be followed to the letter T because it takes you down to the wrong road. Number one, loudspeaker measurements. <coughs> Excuse me. So for loudspeakers, when you read loudspeaker measurements, they are done in anechoic chambers, or at least if they are done properly per industry standards. They should all be measured in anechoic chambers. So when you measure, when you read those uh, frequency response uh, curves and uh, sensitivity graphs, they are given for an anechoic chamber. And uh, what does that mean? Does that mean that you will have that response at home? Not even close. An anechoic chamber is just about as far as, as room acoustics as uh, humanly possible. The closest you can approximate the anechoic chamber's measurements at home is when you Take your loudspeaker, suspend it in mid-air, halfway between the ceiling and the floor, and place it in the exact middle of the room. And then you are getting somewhat close -er to <laughs> the uh, anechoic chamber measurement, but you will be still far from it, but that's the closest you can get at home or in any room. Now, uh, last time I counted how many audiophiles have their loudspeakers suspended in, in the middle of the room. 
I, I well, I haven't met anyone who places their loudspeakers like that. So it is, I think it should be obvious for everyone that when you design your loudspeaker, the uh, frequency graph and, and the bass response and, and high frequency response from that loudspeaker should not be optimized for anechoic chamber measurements. And if you do that, then uh, you are preparing yourself for a catastrophe in your home. And no wonder that uh, we need so much fixing, that, that the loudspeakers uh, need so much fixing, because uh, <laughs> there's a lot of designers who have forgotten what an anechoic test should be uh, doing to your loudspeaker and that when you are voicing your loudspeaker you should not voice it to an anechoic chamber however now these measurements have become our gods basically in audio that's what the people judge the products based on and that's why audio manufacturers are starting to voice the loudspeakers for anechoic chambers and that's why many of them have uh, are have really useless tonal balance when you put them in your home and you are forced to use dsp eq and all sorts of corrections to guide them and if you follow susumu sakuma's advice to voice that loudspeaker to sound good in your room instead of uh, uh, making it a textbook reference uh, unequate chamber response that's when you will get a useful loudspeaker example number two amplifiers when we read loudspeak i mean uh, amplifier measurements they are always given as frequency response, damping factor uh, measured, everything measured with a non-inductive pure resistor. Guys, when you purchase uh, an amplifier, not a single one of us is going to use that amplifier to drive a resistor. Why? because then you are using it as a very sophisticated and very puny heater. When you need a heater in your home, you buy a big heater and no one cares if the THD of your heater is 0.001% or 500%. What you care for is that it produces heat. So when you are taking the amplifier THD curve, uh, damping factor, everything, response measurements, those apply to a resistor and they have very little relevance to how that amplifier drives an actual loudspeaker. And guys, that's why there's so much disconnect between amplifiers measuring, acing measurements on resistors be, uh, and and failing to pr deliver that kind of sonic performance that you would expect from a perfect amplifier. And the reason behind that, because that amplifier is perfect driving a resistor. And uh, when we measure driving a loudspeaker, that's not going to happen. The situation will flip. And there are some loudspeaker uh, amplifiers Okay, let me just stop here. There are some amplifiers which seem to uh, measure not so good dri driving a resistor, but they are absolutely capable driving a real world loudspeaker. So I hope these two examples really uh, start to open our eyes that measurements are useful. And as I have been always saying, measurements will always tell you whether a product is working uh, as, as, a, as, a, as a healthy unit or whether it has problems, whether it needs fixing or is it fine. So when you hook up a resistor to your amplifier and you see that it's not measuring as, uh, as it's supposed to measure based on the 
publications you have for that ampli amplifier, then it means your amplifier needs fixing. That's all, folks, that measurements gives to us. Of course, to a limited degree, they also give us a hunt. That a hunch <laughs> to help with our hunt for a, a, a component that uh, that we can tell whether it's 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 promising or not promising. Of course, when the measurements for a resistor are really off, that's also an indication that your loudspeaker will have trouble driving, uh, uh, being being driven by a real world amplifier. Sorry, guys. My mind is really at work. I'm doing this video at an unusual time, morning before I'm leaving to work, and my mind is already set on that. So I'm, I'm constantly trying to flip the words amplifier and loudspeaker. So let me just refocus back to this video and tell you guys that if that amplifier measures poorly with the resistor, then uh, there is a higher chance that that amplifier will not measure good with a loudspeaker. So if the measurement is really atrocious, then you can't expect anything good. However, if, if that measurement is between acceptable, good range, that is like, like a widely acceptable, let's say, 1% uh, uh, THD or less, and is capable to reproduce uh, 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz within minus 3 dB, then it that will give you that this amplifier has the potential to sound good or anything between good to amazing. Now, if we drop this and say the amplifier has 10% THD, and is capable of driving uh, 100 hertz to 10 kilohertz within a 10 dB tolerance at one watt rated output power, then you can be sure that this uh, amplifier will have tremendous difficulty driving a loudspeaker and will sound very, very poorly. However, if you measure the other extreme with the resistor and the and measurement says that it has uh, THD that is unmeasurable, unmeasurably low, and it has frequency response from DC to 100 kilohertz within 0 0.1 dB, that will not be a guarantee that this amplifier will do its job any better than, a than the other amplifier that measured 1% THD from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz it just means that it's optimized to the peak to the core to drive a resistor okay so i think uh, these ideas should give an indication for everyone it, it and it doesn't mean uh, that that if an uh, an amplifier measures extremely well, it doesn't mean it is bound to fail. It means that it's just doing a strapping job driving a resistor. Whether it does the same amount, whether it can perform the same way with a loudspeaker, we do not know that. And to establish that, you always have to try things. You have to try it driving a loudspeaker. And if it delivers, that's the proof. The data that shows that those measurements, it is just pointing you towards somewhere. It is not a guarantee. It is not proofing and proving anything about sound quality. So thank you guys. Have a wonderful day. Look into Sakuma. And, uh, and just keep an open eye. Uh, whatever uh, your persuasion is, whatever path you are walking on the audio, I always recommend to keep an eye open. I'm not saying that you should leave your own path, you should follow something else. Just be informed, because keeping an open eye always beats shutting your eyes shut. Sure. <laughs> okay, so thank you guys. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.